Hello everyone, welcome to GGN. Today is Monday, July 23rd, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. On YouTube, my channels are ddarko2012 and my backups ddarko2013. Alright, so this first video, obviously I'm going to cover the um, shooting in Colorado. And there, you're going to see some news and stuff like that that, you know, Infowars and uh, alternative news sites are covering. And I may have to bust this into two videos, and then in the third video, um, I can cover what's going on in the Middle East. Because, to me personally, I don't think that you're going to get the connections that I'm going to make in this video, and in the next, and the third one, that you're going to get an Infowars, such as tying this with Israel, and what's going on with the Olympics, and what's going on with, obviously, the gun control. Because it's all about gun control, gun control, gun control. That's all you're ever hearing. And that's playing into what's... Uh, what's happening right now as far as the media demonizing people for doing what what they normally do which is if you support your ability to defend yourself with arms and stuff like that you know that situations like these are not good <laughs> they're not good at all because the first thing that they do is say let's grab the gun so that's a very obvious issue that's going on right now but uh, there's also some underlying themes that are going on as far as actually uh it's like a preemptive strike right now on people who are dissenting, who are speaking out, um, and it's kind of going on the attack against them. So it's not just gun rights, it's about a whole different uh, consensus that's going on right now at this particular time. And so, yeah, this is a, it is sad. I mean, I saw the picture of the guy in the courtroom and with his orange hair and that, and he just looked very sad, you know? And I, And when I was compiling all this information, all this news, I did actually cry. I mean, because to me it hurts to to see all this, and then to see just the the hardcore, um, not just programming, but the hardcore uh, psyops that are going on behind the scenes for people who are trying to call this out for what it is, which is a, a huge psychological operation, uh, uh, like one of the biggest since Columbine, which is why they're calling it another Columbine, which is why it was in. Denver, Colorado, and so I'm going to hopefully be able to tie all this in together and, um, you know, just to show, because you shouldn't feel guilty for having to, for wanting or feeling the, uh, compelled to speak uh, your mind about this issue and not just saying, well, you know, uh, you're politicizing an issue that should be sad. You know, it's, of course I'm sad for these people that were shot. I mean, it would be, I personally think it would be better if someone in that, uh, in that audience got up and put a bullet through this guy's head or the second or third shooter or his intelligence handler that was actually handling this individual, this sick individual, um, that would have probably end, ended a lot of the violence, but it didn't. So, you know, the whole point of this argument is so that in the future, people will be able to be armed when they're at a university, when they're in a hospital, or when they're in a movie theater, and some, quote, lone nut, who happened to be a brilliant dude, that's what they're calling him, not a dummy, is able to get away with something like this because people passively sit by, and they literally said they played dead during all this. They thought it was a big um, uh, show as part of the movie. I mean, that's how conditioned people are, to sit there and let people get slaughtered right in front of their eyes and not do a god dang thing. So I am going to do a god dang thing, and I'm going to talk about it. All right, so yeah, this first article that I have up is Vigil for Colorado Victims Draws Columbine Survivors. So it says here, uh, this is the individual right there, uh, Anne Marie uh, Hochhalter, whatever, wearing a silver cross runner neck sat in front row of a vigil for the victims of the Colorado Theater Massacre. Her connections to those wounded in the attack early Friday at an Aurora movie theater was closer than most, paralyzed in the 1999 Columbine Massacre. The 30-year-old uh, said she can offer little hope to the victims and the loved ones and survivors. So I would tell them that it, with time it gets better, but it never goes away, which is basically the same thing that the mayor, Aurora mayor, and the um, uh, basically, all the uh, the the big wigs, you know, the mayors and the owners of the place, the theater, they all said the same thing. Oh, it's tough, but uh, you know, the only way around this is through it. And 
it doesn't go away. So this is supposed to imprint the, this is supposed to imprint the masses. That's why I say it's, it, it is very likely a psychological operation, especially when it goes back to Columbine, where these uh, these two individuals that carried out this uh, uh, this operation, their parents were associated with what? With black ops or the government? That they worked for the government, just like this individual. His father uh, worked with the Navy and wrote uh, naval research papers. So, and of course, in the early '90s, you had what a big push for gun control. So, something I didn't even think about is this: is Norway remembers victims of bombing. This was exactly one year. This uh, shooting in Colorado was exactly one year after the last big psychological operation that was carried out in Scandinavia. It says here today, Norway paused to commemorate the 77 victims. 7 plus 7 is 14, which is the amount of victims that they uh, 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 that were killed in Colorado of the bomb and gun massacre that shocked the peaceful nation one year ago, a tragedy that a prime minister said had brought the Norwegians together in defense of democracy and tolerance. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, I mean, and what? They have a red, they have a rose, right? A red rose. And we all know what that comes from, right? The rosy cross, the rosy, uh, rosy Christians. So... So it's associated with what? Freemasons, um, the Blazing Star, which is in um, uh, Luciferianism, and uh, all the way back to Egypt. So th these are these are symbols they put right out in front of you that most people don't understand. They're telling you who uh, who did this, who's behind it. Remember this: brave exile, lone wolf, is deadliest threat to the London 2012 Olympic Games. So. And this is what they got, right? A year after Breivik's massacre, Norway tightens anti-terror laws. So they were a peaceful nation. Now they have anti-terror laws like in America. But just like in America, it's the same rhetoric, which is what? The country will, will maintain its open and democratic character as they spy on all your citizens. And the media and especially authorities are referring to this Colorado shooter as a lone wolf. So that's why you'll see articles like this, Lone Gunman, Always a Law Enforcement Challenge. Now, what I found was kind of unique uh, was that usually they'll talk about these lone gunmen, the Pentagon shooters, the lone, you know, the, um, uh, the Fort Hood shooter, uh, the Virginia Tech, is that these lone gunmen are what? They're, 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 they're lackeys, they're failures, they're not that bright. Now, this is the first time they're actually referring to this individual as brilliant and smart and everything, but they're still playing the what? Oh, he had no friends, no one, right? So, and anytime you hear lone gunman, like every other story, there's always a reported to be one, two, three other people reported on the scene, such as this one in this case. But this is for a reason. They do this for a reason. That is uh, because they're going to keep playing the lone gunman theory uh, so that they can basically discriminate against any individual out there. So it said here, uh, he's hard to pick out of a crowd. He has no criminal record. Often he hasn't told anyone about his plans. He's compiled a weapons cache legally, usually through CIA, NSA, black ops type operations that arm him. Uh, he doesn't show up on any law enforcement radar until he's acted like the Christmas Day bomber who was actually escorted on the plane by a sharp dressed man was flagged as a terrorist threat um, uh, and all sorts of uh, different uh, red flags that popped up that this guy was escorted and he was actually uh, FBI admitted that he was an FBI asset so the threat of the lone offender has become such a concern that the FBI in 2009 created more than a 25 member task force to identify common behavioral traits and characteristics in 2012 alone there have been 22 mass shootings according to the Brady campaign to prevent gun violence yeah so here's the kicker he didn't appear to be part of any terrorist or criminal network officials say uh, his purchases were legitimate and raised no red flags. Well, it raised red flags. This whole, all of these different um, types of information are coming out, raising red flags to people with a brain and uh, some skepticism, right? But it doesn't raise any red flags to the authorities because usually they're the ones that allow it to happen. This guy was groomed. So he wasn't part of any terrorist organization. Hmm, that's interesting. So, you know, they basically go on there and it says, well, uh, there's no quick answers. Uh, there's no way to prevent it right there, you know. So they go, oh, and then they go to Homeland Security, runs a nationwide If You See Something, Say Something campaign, encouraging people to report suspicious activity or behavior are displayed around the country. And it says he broke no laws when purchasing weapons as he passed his required background checks, meaning that people that are, are patriots or people that uh, basically re at least respect the law and uh, are good people, 
and know what's going on, like I said, are skeptical. These are the people that are targeting. So, ooh, you know, you could be a, a, a you know, an individual with no criminal record, and you could be a terrorist. So let's just go ahead and, and, and assume that every single freaking person on the planet is a terrorist. So assuming that many of these, I mean, yeah, there's small cases like the uh, Robert Stack, the IRS, is pretty, uh, is a good chance that that was actually a grassroots um, thing, an act. But many of these are not going to the grassroots. These are uh, people, troubled people that are pretty much uh, groomed to carry out these acts uh, to achieve some kind of political ends. And so you'll have propaganda pieces like this come out, gun deaths, a familiar American experience. One of the most depressing aspects of the shooting rampage at the Colorado Theater is just how familiar it is. Uh, it all is to the American experience. So we've seen it so many times. Uh, the search for a motive for the gun control debate. Um, in America, there's over uh, one dozen guns are illegally sold every minute and every day. Almost 300 million privately owned firearms in this country. Mayor Bloomberg and celebrities call for gun control. So it says here, Mayor Bloomberg said, soothing words are nice, but maybe it's time uh, the two people who want to be president of the United States stand up and tell us what they're going to do about it because this is obviously a problem across the country. Pierce Morgan says Colorado Shooter Holmes bought all four of his guns legally at Gander Mountain. I remember seeing an article about that in Bass Pro Shops. Still the wrong time to debate gun control? Hmm? Maybe we better debate. Bat Miller says gun control anyone? And this guy, Corey Montia, says such a senseless tragedy. When are we going to reconsider the role of guns in society? How many more times does this have to happen? So they want, they want the police the biggest gang of thugs on the planet uh, to have guns uh, so that they can be further enslaved. But they don't want individual slaves having guns as well. I mean, you're talking about naive people here. These, these are dangerous people. This is like the Matrix. These are dangerous, dangerous people. It says here, Estelle, guns are not it. Prayers for the people affected by craziness in Colorado. And Rupert Murdoch tweets support for gun control. That's right. We have some. We have to do something about gun controls. Police license, okay for hunting rifle or pistol for anyone without crime or cycle record. No more. And they play the whole left-right illusion of saying, "Oh, and it's kind of surprising because traditionally he's a pro-gun viewpoint, thinking that because he's a, you know Fox that he's conservative." Well, it's not. Selman Rushdie uh, sparks fear with Colorado shooting tweets. That's right. He goes on there and he says. The right to bear arms is the real bane of America. Bane was the villain in the Batman movie. New Jersey senator ready to reintroduce gun control bill. That's right. Frank uh, Lautenberg of New Jersey said he plans to reintroduce a bill that would curtail the ability of a shooter to fire at length without reloading. Then you have gun control supporters seek reboot after political inaction. So then we have Obama seeks U.S. congressional ratification of U.N. Global Gun Control Treaty. That's right. It's called the Small Arms Treaty. It's actually going to be uh, uh, it's supposed to get signed July 27th, which is, like I've said before, is not just the opening of the Olympics, but it's also what? The anniversary, the commemoration of the fall of the Temple, Temple of Jerusalem. So it will empower the U.N. to literally force the U.S. government to enact an internationally agreed licensing requirements for Americans, confiscate and destroy unauthorized firearms of citizens while allowing the U.S. government to keep theirs, ban trade, safe and private ownership of semi-automatic guns, create and mandate international registry to organize an encompassing gun confiscation in America. And they say it's all in the guise of terrorism. So, so there you go. It says here the treaty will be negotiated at a global conference under the auspices of the United Nations from July 2nd to the 27th, 2012 in New York. So calls for gun control stir little support. So there's no support in America really for this, but they're going to put out this stuff. Left blames Aurora shooting on Rush Limbaugh. Now we've all heard this, right? And Rush Limbaugh is a neocon. He could be a globalist, but it is kind of ironic that uh, that he said that the day before it happened. Then you have Alex Jones on the 27th saying, what, we're being brainwashed by Batman. But who headed up the campaign to dress up as the Joker? Who went on a tirade on, you know, basically his own little broadcast? It was Alex Jones. His corrupt Australian 9-11 truth movement. So, you know, I don't know what's going on here, but I think this was a, a part of it to bring down the, quote, truth movement as well. And they're saying these shootings are becoming a politicized American tragedy. Well, how are we forced to handle social issues through politics? 
It says here, former Homeland Security head says heated political rhetoric threatens public safety. In other words, if you're for your rights to bear arms. But Obama didn't visit his city when they had the same amount of people slaughtered. But that's because there's a political agenda. Thank you.